I'm Victoria Brown and this is Crime Watch Raw. It has been a hectic few weeks in the Malaysian crime scene. The global media is still camping outside the Wang Kalian village in Kuda, where more than a hundred mass graves have been unearthed. The spat of events on human trafficking that put Malaysia in the global spotlight began when mass graves were found in camps near the Thai border. Crime Watch reporter Christine Chia trekked up a hill and crossed borders in pursuit of the developments of human trafficking in Malaysia and Thailand. Here's her story. I'm now at the foothill together with all the other foreign press, waiting for the police to lead us up that hill where the campsites are located and it's going to be a two and a half to three hours hike. One hour and 20 minutes of trekking, we are now at this abandoned campsite. However, there is no smell of any decomposed bodies, but we can see what is left of this campsite, which was probably destroyed by the smugglers. What we observe is, it's not really a campsite, it's probably like a cage, because there are a couple of destroyed guard towers around, where there's like barbed wire and there's wire mesh, which makes it look like a cage. It is a very hilly area here, but it is in this vicinity where it's surrounded by the police lines that is the location of 37 graves of traffic victims. But for today, the forensics have only excavated one body and it is just the skeletal remains of the body. We don't know how long the bodies have been around here. And just now on the sides of the police lines, we managed to locate one lower jaw of a human remain. I spoke to Sumitra Visvanathan, who is a spokesperson of the Migration Working Group, to better understand how human trafficking activities here have escalated to such a preposterous level without being discovered. When you have criminal gangs involved in moving people from one place to another, they don't do it out of the goodness of their hearts, right? They do it because there's something in it for them. So they, it's, it's passage, of course, people pay money to get on a boat and to come to a safer place. But as well, that's not enough for the criminal gang. The criminal gang wants to extort and squeeze as much benefit as possible out of that individual. Um, it's the same model that we see in so many other places. So it's, it's like a criminal model that's been replicated. And what it is, is people um, are sort of enticed, uh, you know, to say that, okay, you're facing a terrible form of persecution, discrimination. Uh, this is how you get out of it, passage on a boat, it'll cost you X amount. It's usually a small amount. Um, and so the person pays, gets onto the boat, usually voluntarily, although there are situations of abduction as well, but they get onto the boat and then they're taken to sort of like a transit place. And in that transit place, that person is held in internment, so uh, is detained. And then that person is asked to contact the family back home and money is extorted. So then, the, then the, that's when the threat and abuse starts kicking in and it's, it, unless you pay us X amount of money, this person will die. But most importantly, what I feel is, I feel that uh, as a community, as a society, we as Malaysians need to better understand uh, the root causes of the situation. Why did the situation occur in the first place? Because many people actually don't really know the level and depth of persecution that the Rohingya face in their home countries. More trouble is detected on the other coastline of Malaysia. Kidnappers managed to slip past the keen watch of ESCOM East Sabah Security Command, when four gunmen dragged away a tourist and the manager of Ocean King Restaurant in Sandakan. Last July, gunmen killed a police officer and kidnapped a woman from the resort island of Mabu, also in the east coast of Sabah. 
And in April last year, two women, including a Chinese national, were taken from a resort in Sampurna. Security forces in the country have also been kept busy with the imminent threat from militants of the Islamic State. On May 20th, six of them were charged in the Kajan court with promoting an act of violence against Malaysia. The Star's crime reporter Farag Zulkifli spoke with Assistant Director General of Police Special Branch Counterterrorism Division, Dr. Ayub Khan, on what the country is up against. The threat is real, and uh, if you look at the threat itself, last time it was the first phase, now it's entering the second phase. First phase only involved uh, recruiting, uh, getting fun, uh, sending people to Syria, fac facilitating people traveling from Malaysia to Syria. Mm. But we are entering the second phase now. They are planning, planning to carry out attack in Malaysia. A few target uh, government uh, building, entertainment outlet, and few other strategic places in Kuala Lumpur and Putrajaya. The last uh, rest that we made on 24th of uh, April, they, they already acquired material to assemble a bomb ammonium nitrate, potassium chloride, diesel, remote control, PVC pipe, you see, and other things. That uh, material, if you assemble it properly, can be uh, can make a big explosion. If they want to uh, carry out a suicide type of suicide bombing, that is, mm -hmm. the one that you can carry in bag, right? that one may be a 10 or 15 bomb, because we are talking about 40 kilo of explosive material. It's big. It's big. Mm. You see, if we look at this uh, Islamic State, uh, there are few uh, statement issue where the spokesman Abu Muhammad Al Adani in September last year uh, saying that for well, Muslim for the uh, IS sympathizer, there's no need for you to travel to Syria. You can carry out attack in your country, the, the country that they label as a kufar or an Islamic country like Malaysia. So you can carry out attack. That's yeah, so the first thing. Second thing is uh, they want to take a re revenge against Malaysian government, against the police, because we are arresting, we have arrested a lot of uh, these IS, the yeah, IS members, eh? so they want to take revenge. Okay. That is different between Islamic State group, see, and group that we have, the previous group that we have, we have dismantled, like the Masyamiya, Al Qaeda, uh, Darul Islam. We are not talking about group itself, we are talking about small cell. The, the cell that we arrested on the 5th of April, they don't have any connection with the group that we arrested on the 24th of the Different cell. We are not talking about a group that have well, well structured. Eh? They, have, they have a leader, Amir, they have military wing, Dakwah wing. Talking about group that are operating by itself, small cell, maybe 5 to 10 people, that's it. That's why we are without intelligence, without good intelligence, it is almost impossible for police to detect and to take a preventive action. We need a strong intelligence. We, we are fighting against ideology. We are not fighting but we are not fighting group with ideology. Anybody can be a member of Islamic State, anybody can be a sympathizer. Once you are uh, you are a sympathizer, then you, you can plan your own uh, attack. And for scenes closer to home, a tri gang member was gunned down in Bukit Murtajam during a shooting with police in the early hours of May 21st, after he shot dead a man in cold blood. The Road Transport Department is hot on the heels of illegal immigrants without driving or motorbike licenses. Desiree Gasper, who was at Ops Warga, has the story. And we are at Puchong Padana tonight where officials from the Road Transport Department are conducting a major operation. As you can see, the whole road is filled with officials and their aim today is to capture foreign nationals, illegal immigrants who are without licences, who have been driving on our roads without licences. What we understand so far is similar operations have been conducted last week where 20 people were arrested and these include students from China, Africa and um, most of these students are from the international universities here. Next, 
police raided a drug processing lab and seized drugs worth 1.1 million ringgit. Police believe the pair triad is behind the operation. That's all for now. I'm Victoria Brown and this is Crime Watch Raw.